We all know that catching F1s and carp through the summer months can sometimes be quite easy. However, in winter, it becomes a completely different ball game. And that's why we're here today. We're here with Alex Doherty. He's one of the best commercial anglers in the country. We're here at the fabulous Lindholm Lakes, and he's gonna be showing you how he tackles venues like this through winter. It's almost 10 years since I've fished a venue like this with pole and pellets, particularly for F1s. So it's gonna be very much a steep learning curve for myself as well. So we're gonna be walking through a session with Alex from start to finish. We're gonna talk about the way that he sets his lines up and the reason why he does that. We're gonna be having a look at the baits that he introduces and we're also gonna be looking at his rigs. And more importantly, certainly from my point of view, and I know a lot of you will be interested to see how he sets out his session, how he builds watercraft into it, where he feeds and when, and it's gonna be interesting to see how his session actually pans out. Morning, Alex. Morning. Morning, we? what are we gonna be fishing for today? Right, so as you can see, we're on the bonsai, uh, we're on peg 74. Hopefully we're gonna be targeting a few of the lake's resident F1s. Um, just fishing a pole, keeping it nice and simple and talking you through everything winter F1 fishing. Tackling this lake now is a little bit different this time of year from summer, isn't it? Yeah, obviously, uh, fishing for less fish, probably a little, little bit lower weight. It's just about getting by, it's keeping ticking over and putting fish in the net. So, fine everything down, nice and delicate, and hopefully fishing the way to keep bites coming through the day. Right, Alex, I know for a fact that many anglers lose their way straight away just by overcomplicating things with baits. What's your thoughts on bait choice for this time of year? So as you can see, we've gone very complicated and we've got pellets on the tray. Um, <laughs> obviously being quite a new lake this, we've introduced lots of stock F1s earlier on in the year. They've been fed on pellets, they've been bred on pellets. So it makes sense to try to catch one on that because we associate it as a natural food source. Super simple. So obviously here at Lindholm, you've got to use fish with pellets and we can see, if you could just show us those pellets, yep, so they look some, pretty much untreated straight out of the bag. Some fishery micros, literally just give them a quick dousing in water and drain them off. Yep, no flavourings, nothing added? No, nothing flash, nothing exciting. Okay. Um, some four mils, literally straight out of the bag. If I do anything with them, that'll be as I'm fishing, but I'll show you that as we get into the day. Okay. And then we've just got some nice, lovely four mil Dynamite Pro Expanders. And that is everything. Simple. Nothing, nothing flash, but it's about how you do it and how you feed it, which is hopefully what we're going to get into today. Can't get simpler than that. Um, I've got to ask you, how come no, no corn or ground bait? What are your thoughts on those? Um, I was, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it on the camera, but the lake's still quite coloured, so I think the baits such as corn come more into play as the, you know, the clarity of the water increases and we can see a bait and watch a bait a little bit more. Ground bait, I think the lake's fishing too well for it to be coming into play yet. Um, in a few weeks as it cools off and you're really wanting small, fine particles, not very much food content, that's when I'd be looking to maybe introduce a bit of ground bait, something like a crush expander, just to attract a few fish into the peg. So the harder it gets, the more you would start to use ground bait? Yeah, play a bit more of a part. Before we start looking at how you're going to approach the swim and everything else, can you just talk us through your, your rigs? I know you don't like overcomplicating things, which I absolutely love. What kind of a rig would you be kicking off with today? And is it one rig does all, or would you have a selection set up? Almost rig, one rig does all. Um, in terms of float choice, nice little one and a half mil bristle, slimish pattern and a wire stem for all my pellet fish, I'd base my floats around that. Obviously, the only thing that might vary is the size, depending on the depth of the lake. Um, main line's 015, not too heavy, but nice and durable. If I do get amongst a few carp, it is going to land it. it is, it's all about balance tackle. Yeah. And then in terms of shotting, it's all just in probably the bottom quarter of the rig. Obviously with pellets, I'm feeding a little pile and setting my rig over the top. I'm not too interested in how my rig's falling or anything. It's about setting a trap and being patient. So I don't need any shot in this part of the rig. It, it, it's irrelevant, it's not serving a purpose for me. Got you. I just want to get the rig down, set my trap, and be patient and wait for a bite. So leading on with that, obviously we're fishing for stocky fish. I'm using relatively heavy shot for it. These are number nines. The reason being, often we don't move too much with the bait. So by using a heavier shot, it's going to register better on the bristle. It's going to really magnify them indications with me, with, for the bites. And then it's down to a four inch hook length again, keeping that shot nice and close to the hook to magnify the bite. Little O10 hook length down to an 18 and a hard four mil pellet, but 
you know, as we said earlier, we've got some different oaks, and if we need to swap to an expander, we can do. Brilliant. And I've got to ask this because you know my understanding of this sort of fishing is that sometimes that rig could be used in several several areas of the swim. Is that something you're going to be doing today? Yeah. So hopefully we'll be able to catch them a couple of lines along, and we've also got the same depth down there, slightly to the right. Just meaning I could be more efficient. We might be fishing for lots of fish, lots of little stocky F ones. I don't want to be bending down, picking another top kit up, swapping rigs. If I can use one rig for a number of lines, it makes me more efficient. I can just flip between the two, two swims, three swims, and keep fish coming that way without having to ship my pole back and pick another rig up. Right, you've got loads of options on this peg, Alex. Please, just can you tell us how you're going to kick off the session? Because we see anglers all the time, someone feeding three or four different areas of the swim straight away, and I know you don't do it like that, do you? No, for me, um, especially this time of year, I want minimal areas of bait in my peg, so I'm not going to split the fish up. Okay. So it'll give me a truer reading of what's happening in, and how they're responding to my bait. All right, okay. So, I mean, would you normally just kick off and feed and start in one spot, for example? Generally, yeah, for F1s on a pole, I'd, I'd just pick a nice area where I feel I'm going to get a few bites, just start and feel my way into the session before committing to feeding three, four, five lines. Okay, then. So what are you looking for, then? You've got a rig on. Oh, what sort of... Rig. Can you just tell us what sort of depth you might be looking for? Are you looking for anything okay. close to features? What are you looking for? So, for me, depth is the most important thing. There's no point fishing up to an island if it's... 10 inches deep because we're not going to be in that depth of water at this time of year so generally there's two depths in winter three foot and five foot if you can get in and around those two depths you'll generally find the fish are either in a or b one or the other okay so i generally set my rig around that and then work to those those depths ideally if you can get to near some cover or the fish holding feature brilliant if not i'd always prioritize the depth over the cover so it's a, a balancing act really yeah. got you okay then so can you show us where you're going to kick off today then please so, Always just pick a nice distance you feel you can go in and get some bites. I mean, today, obviously, I've, as you can see, we've got the island, but I don't really want to go into that until later on if I have to. So, just pick a nice distance at 13. As you can see there, just plumb in so the bottom of the body is out of water. So, be happy with that, got a nice little area. And the reason we plumb to the bottom of the body is that the, the rig is never going to be under the same tension as it is with a plummet as it will be with a pellet on. So it just allows for any look stretching the line or anything like that. So what I'm doing now, I'm trying to find a secondary area. So if I have to rest my rig, I can do. So as you can see there, I've got the same depth. And if I can get a few lines at the same depth, I will do because it can make me more efficient. But then the thoughts behind plumbing up, so fingers crossed, they play ball. So that rig there is straight in front of you. I've got to ask you this, what, do, what are your thoughts on distances between lines? So for example, you start in one spot and you catch a few fish and you've got to move. Um, depends if I'm going to revisit the line. I think if, it, if you're starting on line fishing and then you're never going to revisit it, you can put a line as close as three or four foot away. Right. I think if you're wanting to bounce between two lines, I think if you put them a bit further apart, you're not splitting the fish as much between the two. Got you. So that's like, yeah, it's almost a difference between two separate lines or, or chasing them round. Yeah. Whether you're moving to the fish or you're going to pick two spots, they are two spots, you're going to bounce them all day. Got you. All right. Brilliant. Okay. So you're feeling pellets on both lines. And I've got to ask this, obviously on this sort of a peg, you have got features across there um, on, on, towards that other bank. Is there ever a scenario this time of year when you would go right the way across there? Yeah, I mean, depending on the depth across there, I mean, say we've got two and a half, three foot over there, dobbins a potential method, yep. things like that. But I'd always look to progress to that point in my peg. I wouldn't want to start there because at this time of year, I'm just going to push fish away from myself. Got you. Winter time, always start close and work out. So if you were to start out there and the fish push out, they could push out of your peg completely? Yeah, you've nowhere left to chase Right, mate, come on then, kick starting the swim. We know that lots of people blow the peg right from the start. Just, can you, just, obviously you've got these pellets here, you've got some micros there, you've got the four mils, yeah. and you've got expanders. How, what's the typical way of kick starting the swim on a day like today? So the tight Yorkshire man, the monsters <laughs> will love this. Yeah, go on. Literally, eight to ten pellets, don't count them, just a nice little pinch to kick off. They haven't been soaked or anything, have no, they? They're, they're straight dry. out of the bag. So, 
put them in the pot. Straight in the pot. Two more for good luck. Yep. And then, as you can see, you always get an odd floater. See there, how some just stick for a second, then go. Then go, yep. Always just dip your pot, wet them, it'll just mean they all sink straight away. Right, so you're doing that before you ship out. Top tip. So you're going to start on that long line, yeah, where you've where you plumbed up. Line, what we started on, and just rattle a few in. The theory that we're feeding so little, obviously all these commercials are quite highly stocked lakes. There's a lot of fish, so I'm not attracting them as such i'm just trying to catch them that's you know, the fine balance fine balance between feeding them and yeah feed, we're and not bothered about feeding them, we're trying to catch them yep so if i can get away with feeding very little bait the percentage is there we go straight away okay the, the percentage chance of them picking my hook baits a lot better yeah whereas if i have to feed 50 pellets i've got a 50 to 1 chance of getting a bite Got you. Got you. And on the hook now, you've kick-started with a, a band? Yeah, just a band and a hard four mil pellet. Okay. There he is. Nice little stocky. Great start. Do you feel behaved first? There you go. Yes, he's behaving. And he is just nicely up. Off him out. Brilliant, mate. Right, just talk us through your rig, mate, as regards the actual depth. How have you got your depth set? Just put him in. In in terms of the flow, it's just plumbed up to the bottom of the body. I'll just hook him up there. So when that floats in the water, it's just plumbed like that. Just to the bottom of the body. Got your way your finger is, yep. So like so. So in effect, when you're plumbing up, you, you've in effect you've set the rig what? About four or five inch over depth? No, not I'll, as much. You'd probably because two inch, three inch over depth. Two to three inch over depth, okay. The idea being that the plummet's stretching the line a lot more because the plummet's 20 grams. Yep. So that's going to tighten all my rig up and stretch the line. So as I take that off, I'm just and just put a four mil pellet on. There's not that tension in the rig, so I'm just accounting for that difference. Got you. Totally understandable. I mean, I want to know from a personal point of view, mate. Why? Why a 20 gram plummet? I mean, there's lots of people, as particularly over the years, fishing particularly on softer, on softer bottom lakes and stuff, silty lakes. That switch they used to use lighter plummets, some use shots and things. What what's your thoughts on that? Um I just think with a nice twenty gram plummet, one at distance you get a nice reading, you can still feel the plummet on the rig. Yep. Um but also it's a it's a new lake, it's all been redug and reshaped, so hopefully there's not too much silt. Yeah, that makes sense. Um I mean if you wanted to use a, a heavy plummet to get a rough reading then fine tune everything with a lighter plummet. Got ya. That that wouldn't be a problem, but for me I'm quite happy to use this twenty. Perfect. Sometimes from fishing on a slope or up to an island, I use a lighter plummet so it's not going to slide down the slope. Yep. You've got that float really dotted down. You're tapping them pellets in, does the height that you're tapping them in make a difference? Yeah, just from a nice little height at the minute, I'm still trying to get a gauge for what's going on in the peg. Yep. Try not to miss bites like that. <laughs> but yeah, I'm still trying to attract a few fish. Um, hopefully, once we've found the bait, if I start missing a few indications like that, or I keep having um, a few silly indications, I can just sneak them in and then hopefully it's going to make the fish behave in a more settled manner. That makes sense, yeah, got you. Hold on, that. yep. That's how delicate the bites are. Popped off, popped so off that one. Normal. It's something that crops up a lot in coaching. When you first start feeding a peg, yeah. you can have an odd fish come off, miss an odd bite, foul up them. Once they get settled and used to the bait, you'll find the peg calms itself down. So it's not something to stress about, just go through the motions and it will naturally settle down. That's a better stamp fish. Nice f isn't it? You've had quite a few now, you must have had, oh, I don't know how many you've got now in the net, but he's got a bit iffy, hasn't it? Yeah, just a little spell, missing bites, little silly indications, then it's just dried right off. Um, what do you think? Do you think it's time for a change? Would you try something different when that happens? 
Yeah, I think if your pig's fading and going away from you, you can you can do one of a couple of things really. Either feed a smaller particle, you know, say switch from these to the micros. Or oh, from fours to micros, yeah. Just something a bit more attractive, you know, something that falls a bit slower. So is that something you'd do before moving? Uh, possibly, yeah. Just to try and kind of recover that line. Got yeah, just yeah. try and eat them last few bites out before, say, you move or you start again somewhere else. Got you. All right. Still on a hard pellet, wouldn't, when would you um, switch to an expander? Would that be the same sort of scenario if it went a bit iffy? Um, I think the, the cooler it gets, the more we're going to be swinging towards, you know, soft pellets, smaller baits. Uh, just a bit more palatable to a fish than harder pellets. Got you. Are they four, four mil expanders? Yeah, four mils. I mean, some... some oh, oh. <laughs> that's what we want. We don't mind them pulling the elastic out. <laughs> Not bad for early December, is it? No, no, it's not gone really cold yet, but uh, you know, I mean, you've told us what you kind of do when it really goes cold, and to be fair, we'll probably get back here when it gets really cold because I know this approach is going to change. Is this better fish, you reckon, or do you think it's upright? Hopefully, it's upright. Yeah, one thing we haven't mentioned is that Alex has actually changed his elastic. What was the number of elastic or grade that you started off with? Yeah, started with a green power pull of adrenaline, which is probably an eight six. Okay. Maybe a little bit heavier. Um, what what happened? Was you not was it not setting the hook it just or wasn't we quite soft enough? I felt it we were just bumping an odd fish. It wasn't quite forgiving enough. And um, to be fair, I've not been on this lake for a few weeks since it's cooled down. So you know, it caught me off a little bit. But it's something that people should be aware of that don't make do just get up and make the change so you've switched down to a softer elastic yeah softer just a bit more forgiving lets the fish run out the peg nice so this is what about a number six is it yeah probably around that sort of size okay. yeah you'll still be able to land better fish on that won't you yes yeah, so, well so what say two two and a half pounds yep he's coming stamp, no stamp problem yeah put him away ticking over nicely he hasn't had to move yet and he is still He's actually feeding just down here to about five meters to his right, just loose feeding with four mil pellets. Just keep that ticking over and that's the same, he's got that, actually uh, it's, he can fish that line with the same rig. Just popping a few pellets in, yep. giving it a dunk, that's it, it's just so they sink. But this five meter line, it's plumbed up exactly the same depth with, uh, with the same rig and everything, so that's something that he's going to be switching to a little bit later on. Well, Alex has really got the swim ticking over nicely now, you know, it, it, all he's doing is feeding like eight pellets at a time. It's a case of just feeling your way into the session and he's just really kept the swim alive by doing that. He has got the options to move left or right and that's one of the things that is key this time of year. Just don't be afraid to, to move and set up a new line. He's had a few fish on that short, on that five metre line as well, in the same depth, with the same rig. You can't really get much simpler than that, but as we go through winter, I'm sure there's one or two things that are going to help you catch a few more fish. Alex, it's December. Did you expect a session like that? Right. Um, no. To be honest <laughs> with you, um, it's been amazing how good it's been. Really, um, we fish a couple of lines out long, bounced between the two, caught plenty of stockies, odd older F1 on them as well. Um, we had a little bit of a spell where it went a bit funny. We've had to swap around in terms of feeding micros rather than hard pellets, and then thankfully we've turned up short later on, and we've managed to clatter a few there as well. So look, it's freezing cold, as you can see by our dress. We can't moan about the fishing at all really can we no you've had to tweak your feeding did you switch to micros at one stage yeah a little bit of a spell where you know you've got you felt like bites were fading you thought right I need to attract a few fish into my peg so switched to the smaller particles and we had a bit of a response on that once we're back in in the area i can then go back to hard pellets to settle them down and then um, hopefully pin them to the bottom a bit better it's been a great insight. Have you just got any sort of final key keywords just to give anyone a bit of advice about if they're unsure about what to feed, where to feed? Have you got any sort of just last bit bit of advice for anyone tackling this sort of venue? In terms of winter F1s, I'd always stick to either pellets or maggots, in this case pellets. Um, if you can, try to get away from yourself, fish a little bit longer, but always give yourself somewhere to back off to. And then make sure you scale everything down in terms of feeding, whether it's the amount of bait, the size of the pellets you're using. And also in terms of your rigs, you know, finer bristles on your floats, lighter lines and smaller hooks. And hopefully it'll keep you catching a few fish like this in the cooler months. It's been a really interesting insight into this form of fishing, which is inevitably very, very popular all over England. We really hope that some of these 
key details some of these tips and tricks are going to help you catch a few more fish this winter on this style of venue and if you have enjoyed this bit of an insight and we really appreciate alex's input please give this video a thumbs up and we've got more videos coming from alex about this style of fishing coming over the next few weeks so if you don't want to miss out on those please hit subscribe and we look forward to seeing you next time Bye.